Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. All right, welcome to a video. For Saturday videos, for some weird reason, I always like to mix it up and I don't always do it. But I thought today what we would do is we would talk a little bit about creating your own independent property, world building, and kind of what goes into coming up with something on your own uh, in an original sense. And I was watching some videos last night of a concept artist Sorry, I've got cough drops in my mouth, so uh, I don't cough as much during the video. But um, his videos were really interesting to me, and he was going through some of the um, art of like video game books, and he made a lot of really great points. And I think that um, sometimes when you see comic book reviews and things like that, uh, we don't always get into the nuts and bolts of actually creating um, your characters, how color, style just the whole thing, how it all ties together to make the world that you build, um, you know, exciting for people to look at and also, um, uh, cohesive. So yeah, let's do this. And, uh, if you haven't checked out my Patreon, I would highly recommend it. There's probably close to 450 videos up there. Uh, $1, uh, tier will get you full access to everything that I post. Um, there's tip jars above that and then also um, I can do direct reviews for you or even lessons So check it out penciling videos inking videos uh, More book reviews just insight into really anything that I learn. I try to share it. I always play it forward So all right, let's do this. Um, so this is the art of Witcher 2 I've never played the game. I'm nearly sure I've watched walkthroughs of it while I'm working um I have little stretches during the year where I get really into watching, um, usually, um, I think it's MC Ice and Fire, or, uh, I'll watch Rad Brad if I want, um, dialogue, but anyway, so, this is just a splashy image to get the thing going, so, these will kind of come up out of order, but I'll try to address everything that we see, and we can kind of break it down, but, uh, this is a nice shot of the main character, and, uh, alright, let's do this. So... Generally speaking, you'll hear me talk a lot about um, world world building. I, I I really think that that's important in comics, and I know that comics, generally speaking, is more of a character um, focused thing. But I think because I come kind of more from a video fan, like a video game fan background, where uh, my fantasy entertainment and the way that I interacted with my imagination as a kid, and even you know in my late teens and early twenties, was always. Uh, video games. I wasn't into comics, and in fact, the store that I started collecting comic books from was a video game and comic book shop, and if you've heard this story before, it's actually very funny. I went to that store for probably two years and literally never, ever looked at a single comic book before I broke in. I had no interest in them, and uh, that was the store that I ended up, uh, a friend of mine worked at and had me come down and check out Spawn. But yeah, I would go down there and rent video games all the time and never ever gave uh, any interest to comics at all. So my background is definitely more in this lane. But anyway, so I mean, we're already looking at iconography here. I mean, you've got a forest scene. You've got these um, sort of, uh, you know, statues or they're almost like um, the Indian, uh, God, I can't think of what they call them. But, uh, you know, there's symbolism that's put on them. I mean, there's like a hand holding, it looks to be like a fish. I, initially, I thought it was a hand over the heart, but um, you've got these other symbols. Stuff like this is fun, and you would be surprised at how many people that read your books, look, it's Harry Potter's lightning bolt, um, are into stuff like this, and really... Uh, huge fans of your book will look for these little details and I mean you can add little funny stuff you know uh, Todd McFarlane is I just as a weird coincidence you know he would draw Felix the cat uh, some people throw ladybugs into their things and it's just like a fun little thing so create that opportunity for your fans to interact with um, your story so this is a village um, one of the things that the concept artist was saying is don't be afraid to explore and let yourself be liberated into doing um, uh, drawings that, that maybe aren't as aesthetically um, uh, polished, but get your point across for you. So, I mean, you can see the color palette that they're going for here is very muted. There's little touches of, it looks like fabric. Initially, I thought it was um, 
possibly like flowers but uh it, it doesn't look to be she's got a little touch of color on her she looks a little bit more fancy than everyone else i mean it's like they're using real muted colors for uh, basically all the villagers but she is dressed up more and has a splash of color little things like that can set things off they're just little details that you want to um you know just me pointing that out maybe at some point you'll do a scene where it's a rough village and they're not um, you know, they don't have a lot of money. They're, they're people of the land and yet other people come in and you want to maybe, I know kitty people of the land, that would be you. Um, you know, but if people visit, maybe they're, they have a little tiny bit more color. This looks like a spread with like a cathedral. Um, let's see. Again, there's the sort of the built in sort of detail on these pillars um, you know, and, uh, yeah, a lot of times what I saw at Wildstorm when Carlos in particular was working on the DC game is how much re research he did. Um, he basically not only, I mean, not only did he work on the DC MMO, but he really did do a lot of the core designs for the very first and very, very successful Batman game. He didn't get a lot of credit for it because they passed it off to another company to complete the game. But he did all the early stuff. And, you know, they were looking up stuff like different cultural uh, symbolisms. You know, what did the, the Aztecs use? What's... Uh, Japanese design, what's African design, what's, you know, European design, what's European design in the 1700s versus the 1800s, that kind of thing. Um, and this is pretty clever, like this boar's head on this. And, you know, again, maybe this ties into, well, it's a rant that says, the battering ram's head is a shod, okay, so it is a boar's head. Um, crushed battlements, and, and uh, I think this is a really nice touch, you know. There's a little bit of imagination to this. It's a little different. It's something that'll stand out. And again, your fans will appreciate stuff like this. This one is almost too ornate. It doesn't look very functional. So functionality over just cool design. Uh, you know, generally speaking, I, I definitely lean towards more functionality. But at the same time, there are places and things where you can go super duper crazy. And I think it works. And the balance is the best. If you can use stuff that's very efficient and very useful, um, you know, and it's not overwrought, like this looks like this could handle breaking through something. This doesn't to me, but this is still an interesting design that could be used for something else. This is very cool, but it looks more like armor. Again, these pieces look like they could break off to me. This is looking a little more solid, and to me, this looks the most solid and the most penetrating. So, you know map i already said i've got a map for blaster kid it was really really fun coming up with it it's it's actually uh, I, well I, I won't say too much but um you don't really see all of the map at first so i'm trying to figure out how if that was a tier where you could actually get the map like how i could do where there wouldn't be spoilers at certain parts of of uh, the book itself this is great um what I love about this is that you get to see the architecture intact and then the ruins and even stuff like this will give you an indication of the amount of finance that a place has you know if you use more um, things found from the land in the buildings then that will look more lo-fi if if there was money at one point in a place where your characters are going to be it's going to be more high tech obviously in comics we do a lot of <laughs> sci-fi and things that are more beyond sort of the um sort of medieval stages but you can still use that same point of view what you know what level of of you know financial backing do they have to build what they build and then go from there so you know these are interesting though because this looks it's, it looks a little more middle middle eastern to me this looks more european and this maybe looks you know like it could also maybe be like indian or something like that i'm not saying that that's accurate but just the the pattern the patterns that they used on this this to me definitely looks more um like kind of northern european where these kind of don't but i'm not saying it's accurate but there's still cues um 
thought this was really cool. Nice little piece of technology. I mean, this stuff is really, really fun to craft, you know. You go online, look up, you know, Nikolai Tesla or old telescopes and things like that and kind of cobble together pieces of things that you think look cool and just try stuff. And when it starts to look good, you know, make sure you maybe come up with at least one design that you're going to run with and, and then keep that consistent. And these are interesting. And again, if you look at the color, the color could possibly indicate the the value of things like this to me looks more organic and in fact it is it's funny um my cat was trying to think but you see this is green and what does it have it has like herbs um things from the earth the fishy one is more fishy colored and meaty colored and then this looks more expensive and fancy i mean this is just by the note and these are attentions to detail that that i, I see people that are coming up with their own creator and book creator own books early on they don't notice these details they don't put these details into their thing and they'll draw maybe something like this but you know just this embroidered pattern on this there's a level of value and and just class that you see in this that this doesn't this is still nice but it's even you know it's got maybe like um you know kind of more Irish looking um, sort of patterning and the little pots and stuff like that. It's really, really good. This is such a good example of what I'm talking about. Okay, we'll keep moving. But I mean, you can tell already that this is going to be something that's probably a little more pricey. Yeah, it's armor, plates, like fine thing. Looks like a beautiful maybe pillow or something like that. A little jewelry and stuff really really well done got some meat the meat one's just like no nonsense he doesn't even put up drapery he's just hanging meat off wood and spikes and it's like the wood looks wet and like moldy and this thing looks like it's been through the mill but really nice attention to detail put that detail into your comics put those into your settings make your settings look different you'll hear me talk about it with texture and inking where it's like i i have used the example of um when I've ever had to do a book that has Superman and Batman on the pages together, I don't ink them the same way. I ink Superman's costume differently than I do Superman's, uh, Batman's. So even little things like that, you know, textures, materials, the, um, uh, uh what do you call it? The, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the digital term for it, but anyway, so let's see this. It's cool. Different attempts at this, but again, I you know what I what I like about this is this just getting the idea down. This isn't about a beautiful drawing. It's not about the anatomy. Uh, it's not about you know proportions. It's just about how how are these people affixed to the wall. So when you get that stuff worked out, <coughs> then you can worry about the nice drawings. Stop. You guys are being assholes. Stop it. It wouldn't be a video without my cats being jerks. So this is interesting. This guy at one point looks like he might have had some level of wealth or stature. This is, you know, he's got a crown on, like fancy fur. And again, I haven't played the game, so I can't. I'm only just projecting on what I'm seeing in this. Um, but, you know, so placeable elements are useful. Yeah. This is cool. Out of context, I don't know exactly what this is, but it, it almost looks like maybe it was an omen to people. Like, like we killed the king or the, the leader of the village and we could do it to you, but it almost looks like maybe he could animate too. But anyway, placeables. All right, so this is some interior design. We'll just look at culturally what we see going on. So it's like got a little bit of sort of like... I don't know. I mean, it looks a little Egyptian, but it also looks a little like like Incan art or something like that. This is interesting because this almost looks serpent-like, you know, like almost like a squid man or something. Uh, maybe it's a silhouette. Because this looks like the same pattern, but it just is like rendered a little different. 
And again, there's still destruction, so... These are nice. So the parents are based on classic Greek and Roman architecture, but this looks like it's placed way more in the mountains, you know, which might not necessarily lead to that. This is beautiful. But yeah, have fun with your world building. I mean, that's really the thing. Wow, this is great. Yeah, this is really cool. It's like an amphitheater, almost like a stage or something like that. It probably isn't, but, um, you know, you could see maybe the king coming out here at the height of this society and speaking to people gathered here or um, that, that some sort of events took place down here. This is all really, really nicely designed. <clears throat> this is all cool. Like heroes or past sort of victors. This is nice. Oh, man, look at this. Man, that's great. That's really, really cool. So, we've got all these like little nooks and crannies that you can get lost in. Windy little roads and stuff like that. It's a little hard to read. Um, I'm trying to see the condition of the place here. It, it looks still nice, but kind of like it might be in ruin. It's important that you can tell what sort of condition things are in. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Again, that's just to get the idea down, so I totally get it. Peacock feathers would show some wealth, probably. The armor, you know, is well made. He's got a sword with a beautiful scabbard and all that. I mean, so... Again. <clears throat> Some coat of arms. Okay, so it is the square of a ruined city that's been built up. That makes sense because it does. It looks damaged, but it looks um, like uh, it's functional still. So I was kind of wondering what was going on. That's why it's it's built within the walls of a ruined city makes sense and now I get it more but I was getting that vibe so the, the pictures were sort of explaining that this is nice this is cool we kind of saw that before the camps the architecture all right so what do we got here so this is interesting we'll look at a few and see what we got going on. This guy definitely looks like he's sort of like like they built this dude to like fight. And look at this. It's a cool design. I mean, you figure if this is a regular soldier and this is some sort of... It almost looks like an orangutan that stands upright. And you see the face. It's got a little bit of like an orangutan quite, type quality. But he's also got all this sort of like almost like splint mail armor on him. And like even up here. <clears throat> Hopefully we'll see him again. And then this guy really, like I said, it's it's like he's clearly like like something that they've created or some sort of black magic turned him into a boss. But you can tell. I mean, the size of him is different. His anatomy and stuff would be different than a regular soldier. These guys almost look like firefighters. It looks like they maybe drew over like firefighter photos photos and uh, then just changed the hats a little bit, like fo like a little bit of a photo bash kind of thing. Um, this is cool. Again, I'm big on color. It, it's it's like if you've watched enough of my videos, you know that I, I actually am pretty highly focused on color. And um, it's a difficult, well, I mean, it's not difficult, but as someone who wants to pencil and ink to be a control freak about color too, because I think it's incredibly important, it's an interesting um, a dilemma to face because it's, you know, you're just stacking more hours on each page. But I've worked out, I think, a methodology. And if I could always collaborate with a good colorist, so. Because I actually do enjoy collaborating and seeing what people come up with. Um, I mean, that is part that is a fun part of the process. But um, you know, what I mean, if you've got a vision for certain scenes, it's important that you can have that come through. This is cool. Again, this looks slightly ornate. I mean, do you see? This is not just like these people look like they have some money. 
there wouldn't be a nice design element on it if it wasn't. And this is a pretty nice structure built here. More symbolism, more sort of style. Um, so dwarves have a knack of technical solutions. Those dwarfs, they know, they know how to build and construct and mine. I played Dungeons and Dragons too. <laughs> oh man, that's nice. <clears throat> but yeah, when you know, and, and the thing is, is okay, so like, how could you apply this to comics? When you go in, like, Wils, I think, said this to me one time years ago. We, Wils is a really, really interesting artist, and he's very verbal. He loves to talk about art. He loves to talk about design. In fact, when you go into Wils's office and you talk about art, you could pretty much kiss like two to three hours goodbye. I would go, when I would go in, I would just plan. I would go, all right, it's like 10 o'clock in the morning. We ain't going to be done till noon. You just knew. But here's the deal. You don't have to do this all the time. I, for whatever reason, detailed comic book artists want to be detailed all the time. I really think that that works against you. It, it's like you only need to do this once. Establish like like if you go into um, a wizard's home and you need to establish that this guy's a badass wizard and he's got success and money and weapons. I'm not saying that this is a wizard thing. This more looks like an armory, or or something along the lines of that. Do one really beautiful establishing shot where you really sell what this person's about. J. Scott Campbell was great with this too. In, in uh, Gen 13, he was more minimalistic with it. In Danger Girl, I think he amped it up a little bit. But, you know, put all the pieces that show their life. Like, like maybe this was an adventure where this guy acquired this thing. And this is a flag from some, you know, other you know, battle that he was in that he, he brought home as a keepsake. He brought home swords that he took off of, you know, high ranking officers that he killed. But then once you've established this, as you go into other storytelling panels and pages and stuff like that, you can start to minimalize it and it makes this page so much more important. So it's just, a, just a tip. Cause if you want to tell stories, at some point you need to expedite the process a little bit. And I'm not encouraging people to be lazy, but also it's just, it's more exciting to the eye. Have detail, have no detail, have really graphic stuff, have very simple stuff. Variety, it just makes you, you excited to see it, you know? It makes everything stand out more. That really simple panel with just the character will stand out just as much as that insane city scene that you did where you drew everything. This is cool. This looks very ominous. I find it fascinating that it has stairs going up and around if these are doors. But this is probably just a wall. But, you know, I was talking about, like, when I look at things like this, I always kind of imagine if I could travel around what's up here what's up here what is up here is this to me what this is is it goes up here it could possibly go that way but more likely what it does is it goes up here it goes like this it comes back around and comes back around here and there could be like um little um lookout posts on each side but it is possible that somewhere else over here is an access route to there but i you know said i have a pretty crazy imagination so what do we got here? These are probably the dwarves. They mentioned the dwarves. I'm not 100% sure, but these... Oh, it's hard to tell. This guy looks pretty big. His proportions don't look totally dwarf-like. But anyway, you get an idea that the, you know, they're using water maybe for energy or to, you know, um, to help the mining process. These could be encampments. This maybe is probably where they're mining. Tell your story, you know? These look more refined. I mean, if you they'll, on that last page, the one hole where I said that could be where they're mining, did you notice that the silhouette of it was rougher? These look more like places where they would go to reside. On the page right just before this, if you go back and you look, that had a very rough cut on it. Like they had either just gone in there or that was more of a functional entrance way. These don't look that way. There's even stairs. Th this is all very intentional. You need to be intentional with um, what you put in your comics. This is beautiful. And this has, there's a sexuality to this, and then sure enough, um, but this looks very posh, and then you see what's inside. So 
again, great storytelling. These little sort of glowing fuchsia lamps and stuff like that. You know, there's a sex appeal to that. And even the little lacy pink things. These dudes are on it, man. They hired a great team to come up with this stuff because it's pretty subtle. Um, and really, really tells the story well. And this is lacking in comics. Not all comics, but I, I would, would say that I've, I, I'm sometimes the most critical of writing in comics and coloring in comics. The pencilers and inkers seem to have it down um, overall. But, uh, you know, too much color. There, there are great colors in comics, but there's a lot of very average ones. Um, this is the stuff that they need to understand is just how to really create these beautiful, beautiful moods. I think what it is is coloring is very easy to learn. And with a few, you know, a few months of working in Photoshop, you can color. I mean, you can color in a day. <laughs> it doesn't mean you're a colorist, you know, and it's like you have to understand light. You have to understand form. You have to understand environments and moods. And, and color theory and all this stuff. And either you're gonna have a natural intuition for it and then you refine that with real knowledge or you need to do your, your work. And this has a different vibe too. And even the shape of these can actually tell a story. These look just like more, um, these are like soldier tents. You can just tell there's a difference to them. A lot of tents, all right, so let's move a little quicker and see what we've got. So this is nice. It's like maybe uh, there was once a bridge that went across here that, that was destroyed. Let's see what we got down here. <clears throat> I guess this is probably just for scale in this particular drawing. But it works. You know, the thing is, is if you were going to do a piece like this and you did want to show a sense of scale with it, you know, having some object that's clearly identifiable, if you didn't necessarily need to use a person, there could be a couple of animal, you know, animals down here or, you know, something like a small rowboat um, they, to give it a sense of scale. Yeah, and this is like another uh, support beam of the bridge. What is this? These these art of books are so freaking great. I have tons of them. I think, I'm trying to think what my first one would have been. Maybe Final Fantasy or uh, what was it? arms wild arms too <laughs> uh and i have i definitely have the gears of war or not gears of war um metal gear solid art of book those were my early ones of video game art books this is cool so what is this a prison oh mental hospital wow okay that's cool is this open uh, it's open so this isn't a ruin clearly like this this is either had some sort of battle went on here and they're just using this now is a mental hospital. I, I find it odd that that would be open um, unless it was damaged. And this is all really, really cool. Okay, and those are those little statues from before. This is interesting. What is this? A creature? Yeah, that's cool. You know, something unique, nice hybrid. Um, you know, I, I've talked about in the past how difficult it is to come up with something that's unique. I, I haven't really seen this before. So to me, they were able to take, you know, um, uh, well, I guess like a Venus flytrap, turn it into a fungus, throw it in a tree trunk, and you've got like a pretty cool creature. So try to think outside the box and see if you can come up with stuff like that. So this guy got killed by arrows, but... It would have almost been cool in the shot to have like like the sniper up here where like maybe you don't notice them at first but then you look and you see someone crouching up here and you could hit them with just the tiniest bit of like this peach color you know like if someone was up here and you just had just a little that's a little actually that's the thing is when you start to move colors this probably will be better this is lighter no it's too bright um yeah you want a really desaturated color something like this Yeah, these colors, they look very mellow down here, but when you put them in a different environment, do you see how hot that is? But anyway, you could have like some sort of indication of someone like kneeling up here. If you sketched out a figure, it would be kind of cool. Again, these are just uh, to, to create the environments and surroundings, so I get why they're doing it. And again, scale, you know, <clears throat> these are beautiful, beautiful trees, though, but, you know, if you're sending your character through a really wild forest, you know, make sure that you blow it blow it out of proportion it should be exciting you know why have regular trees when you can have super massive trees 
These are cool. So clearly this is not a good guy's ship. <laughs> uh, you know, oh man, that's awesome. Nice. That's a nice touch. Dude, those guys are screwed. Can you imagine being captured and your cell is hangs on the outside of a ship? That would suck. That's awesome. What a great idea. And this is a nice touch. Really, really nice touch. What's the... I'm curious what the mast is. So, uh, is this the same boat? No. That's great, though. Yeah, you don't want to be on this ship, that's for sure. That's cool. It's funny because it's so colorful. It looks like a person tied there. I'm, I'm assuming it's not, but the, the flesh color and stuff like that, I'm assuming it was painted that color. This is cool. Yeah, it's just a master, but it almost does look like a person's been like sort of stuck there. I find it interesting that this is the symbol on this, but a big skull would look a little cheesy too. It's almost like a two over the top. This is interesting. This is like a barn or some sort of work work area, and then this looks a little more fancified. Oh, it's cool. The crane. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Great shot. Let's show the size of it. Okay, what do we got here? He looks like he's had too much pie. <laughs> he's like, do you have more chicken? <laughs> uh, let's see. This is cool. Like, it's... Uh, there's a mask that I saw recently that has, like, a hand that creates the face, and it's funny because it has a little bit of this vibe. It's not exactly this, but this is very, very cool. And this looks pretty, pretty dark and menacing. The melted wax with that red. Oh, these are more sort of bony color, but um, this is either paint and uh, I guess it's a deity that they, they worship. And it's a uh, grotesque alterations of those found in the surrounding woods. So it's pretty foreboding. Oh, I guess this is it in the in game. This is cool. Uh, hopefully there's a ton of character designs. I'm sorry. This is nice. The dungeons. Man, this is great. I want to play this level right now. I'd be running all over. Opening chests and killing stuff. It's funny because this shot reminds me of, I think it was Tomb Raider 1 or 2, but, oh, God, you would walk into these rooms, and they would have these huge, like, I think it was in Tomb Raider 2, and you're just like, oh, God, I'm going to be here forever, running through here, trying to do whatever puzzle they want me to do. This is great, too. This is very, very nicely built, though. This definitely has, you know, a level of quality to it that, um, you know, whoever originally established this place definitely had a lot of money. And uh, there's probably some good stuff in here. Oh, I'm hoping that there's characters. If not, I might actually open the Dark Souls art of book. And we can look at some character design. Because I think that'll be fun too. These are great. So it looks like medicine. I don't even know what that would symbolize. But you could get into this. This is cool. And I'm telling you, I have friends that, like, they're not comic book fans. But, dude, they would tear this stuff apart and break down what all this stuff means. It's a lot of fun for people. So, you know, all the little attentions to detail that you put, they don't go unnoticed, you know? People really enjoy it. So all nice drawings. Inspiring stuff, you know, good shapes, good ideas. I mean, you can really get a lot from stuff like this. This is cool. So clearly, someone pretty powerful hangs out here and he's got this chick hanging out yeah there's some money here he's got a lot of weapons and he's been killing stuff for a while okay so it doesn't uh does it go into characters cover art cover art stuff is all cool let's check out his armor really quick This is nice. These buckles are great. A little bit of chainmail. 
or I, I think that, well, I don't know, is that considered chainmail? This is nice. This stuff all looks very functional and very sturdy. You know, this could take a blow, and this glove looks like it could it could handle it. And if he has this running underneath it, then he's got even a little more support. But, I mean, obviously you want to protect your joints. This is all fastened down. His shoulders are protected. This gives even more protection. His neck has got protection. Um, you know, things like collars and stuff like that. I mean, it should... It, especially in a game, it has to have functionality, but... You know, when you come up with a costume, when you want to, you want to make sure that your character can move around it comfortably. But this guy looks like he could move still fast in this, and he's yet still protected. It's like got a real solidity to this outfit. A good sword, though, might be able to cut through that. This is nice. Look at the armor here. Hey, what is up everyone? All right, I'm back. It may not be much of a break for you, depending on how I edit it. So this is from Dark Souls 2. What I wanted to do, because the um, the other book didn't have uh, any character designs in it, is look at character designs. And, you know, obviously a huge part of doing comics is how do you design your characters? So as much uh, care and thought as you put into your environments and place settings and weaponry and and just you know everything that your characters are going to go through you got to give the costumes love and a lot of that is really really fun to do and you can try different things and and uh, look not a bad way to do it is you can always start traditionally and they go into photoshop and take something like this middle guy here sorry and then put more stuff on him you can you have him like this and throw a hood on him and just try different things try different cuts of pants and stuff like that and we've got a lot of stuff open so i'm going to move through this one quick but uh anyway this should be fun so armor and these games aren't necessarily superhero but i think any of this applies to that so you know they tried it with a cape back here the armor is interesting so let's see so he's got movement here um, this isn't connected because the arm has to be able to have its articulation. You know, you want your arm to be able to go up and back and stuff like that. So it is something to keep in mind, you know, when you draw costumes and stuff like that. He's got protection on his hips and abdomen and yet mobility options here. These boots look very, very solid. He's got this is its own piece so that he can bend his knee. Um, this is affixed here because this is this is fairly non, um, you know the the range of motion here is limited, um, but then again it stops here because his feet will need to pivot. So this is an expensive costume too. We talked about that before. Is how much you know money goes into what they have based on where they're from. So you know what I mean. This guy is clearly someone that's working either for someone or he's got enough money to buy some nice armor and sword let's check out this this is culturally nondescript i mean i guess it kind of looks a little greek um but uh yeah you know if you can send a clear message by um the cut of the facial hair the design of the head the shape of the head the the wet the width or narrowness of the nose any kind of headdress to ground it in something is it is it giger-esque or is it african based or is it mexican based or is it asian based you know whatever it is um you know this is very very cool now that's great so this is tied to this dude's fist that's nuts and it looks pretty strong I feel like these might break off, but overall, like it was like that boar's head thing that we looked at earlier in the video. <clears throat> you want to make sure that there's a functionality to it, but um, these look good. The only thing that concerns me is because the fingers have joints, I feel like these would be very, very susceptible to like snapping off, so it's not a huge deal, but I would have almost made them um, uh, one sort of more unified thing and not indicated this uh, segment here, because that segment to me is just the Achilles heel of that weapon so you know do i look at a comic book and think that stuff no probably not but if i'm working on design then yeah i would could take it into consideration 
but it's just more intuitive. You know what I mean? Like I'm not racking my brain coming up with these ideas or observations. It's just sort of, you just sort of look at it and then think like, okay, like if I scrape this across some dude's face, what's it going to do? This is great. It's an interesting design. To me, this leads me to believe that at one point this culture had some sort of um, hardship and they've represented that on the bell with this like overgrown metallic uh, like root system. And this to me is, is starting to get kind of like a Mayan feel a little tiny bit. I'm not saying that it is. And then this, you know, obviously looks a little satanic or something like that. Or at least foreboding. Stuff is nice. What is the emblem on it? Is that a wolf? Uh, looks like a wolf or a lion of some sort. This is pretty interesting, but you know, like I'm not necessarily sure. But to me, this could look almost like more elven. Um, it's it is ornate, but um, it's definitely and this possibly is ivory. And then this kind of feels almost culturally different. This almost feels like it could be like a seed from something that they've tied feathers to. Like it's a nut <clears throat> with feathers tied to it. It's interesting. I don't know what that is. It maybe is like a magical item. This is cool. Again, it's got a kind of an elven feel that looks a little evil too. I think this looks a little like, you know, um, silhouettes and stuff like that will definitely send a message. This looks a little more regal um, and less evil. This feels a little evil to me. This not as much. This guy could be up to something though. <laughs> guy or girl <coughs> this is interesting it's very colorful and very ornate and it clearly blends two worlds like the organic with the more modern day and then the purple might signify something I mean you've got sort of an amberish yellow or gold and then the green but yeah this feels like um, you know two two things coming together she's in a weird pose I'm I'm wondering what that's about if she's dead and she walks like a zombie or she has animal feet these don't look like animal feet but these look almost more like um like wolves feet or something like that but yeah, I don't really get this the, I don't get the story behind this uh, this could be animal fur She's got some sort of magical dust on her, but yeah, I'm not totally getting the design on this. So to me, this might need a little bit of work. Just based on that drawing, I don't get it. This is interesting. I'm assuming this guy's undead because there's nowhere for them to see or has been reanimated or something like that. Because, uh, yeah, I don't really. Uh, unless these are eye holes, I don't think that they are. But yeah, this could be something that's been brought back from the dead. It's really cool looking though. It's got like animal fur on it and a little bit of armor. Maybe like maybe this is some of its original armor. Oh man, the um the General Reaper sideshow. If you guys have never seen that statue, I wanted that thing so bad, but I was too late to get it and I've only had one opportunity to buy it, but the um oh my god, I wanted that thing so bad. This is really cool. Yeah, these must be undead soldiers. It's pr pretty awesome looking though, and these things look super creepy. I give Silent Hill, the the pyramid head head guy. That is su that is such a great, great design. It's so badass, and it's so like on paper. You go, I don't know, is that too much? This is a huge object on this dude's head, and it just works, and it looks so cool. But this is great. Actually, this is really nice. This is really cool too, these huge shoulder pads. Uh, but again, you see he's got, there's a functionality to this right here. This has to be able to lift so the arms can move. So this is all really, really cool. These are kind of telling a story, you know. This looks like he's not as dead. <laughs> it could just be another option for it. But yeah, this looks a little more um, fancy. The armor still got it sort of platinum plate oh, this is interesting yeah so this looks like it might tie in with that other character that we saw it looks a little like an undead drow elf but then the, the icicles and stuff like that it's pretty cool it's interesting this is 
trippy. Yeah, it's interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah, those are, those are trippy. I'm assuming you would find those in the wild. Wow, look at this thing. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure I'm feeling the zebra stripes on it, though. Because these have an icy quality to them. I don't know if I would have merged um, the zebra vibe with it. Because zebras, I just picture in Africa where it's warm and hot. So that throws me off just a little bit. A little bit. This is cool. He looks like the the dude from the Rankin Bass Freeze Meister, whatever his name was. <laughs> That's crazy. These dudes look tough to fight. It's cool. It's a neat design. It's funny that it's all armor based. You know, like it's ice on like sort of knights. They could have taken it a little bit wilder, maybe a little more, not necessarily organic, but I don't know if the armor is necessary with all the ice that they could have maybe like tweaked it a little bit if they wanted to go really outside the box. This is really cool. Wow. That's pretty neat. Neat idea. Perspective is off on some of this stuff though. Just saying. Let's see what this is. Well, we'll look at this. This is a two-page spread. This is nice. I love stuff like this. The cracking flesh with that sort of just burning embers inside of it. You know. And that sword looks gnarly. Oh, yeah. This thing is badass. Yeah, that's really cool. It's like he's powering up. That's nice. Woohoo. This should be a good video. It'll be nice and long. Um, and this is all really, really cool. I love stuff like this. It's, it's powerful. It's suggestive. It's evocative. It's diffused where there's a, a focus of detail and then a more sort of ethereal quality to it. It's all good. So this has got a little bit more of an Asian feel to it. These guys are cool. This guy looks like he would move fast. I'm not sure what it is. It could be this, honestly, it could be this very long thing here. You just immediately picture it, like, flying around as he's jumping and, like, attacking you. But, yeah, I, th I think that's what it is, is this is a very fast line. And it just gives him a sense of speed. Isn't that funny? In fact, let's do this. Uh, brush. It immediately slows him down. <clears throat> You see that? That's how powerful line is. Who does videos like this for you guys? No one. I'm telling you. Share my channel. If you've made it this far, you need to do it. But do you see how much slower that moves? <clears throat> I'm a freaking genius. <laughs> no. But yeah, <clears throat> that immediately indicates to me that he's got a very, very fast range of motion. And that he's going to be flipping all around. And these feel slower, you know. This guy feels like he would fight you more on the ground. That other guy, just you really get a feeling that he's going to be jumping and flipping and doing all this kind of crazy stuff. This dude is heavy. He needs to be bigger. His legs need to be bigger to do this. Frazetta was a master at this. And these are obviously, this looks crazy because it's, oh, it's the back of him. I was like, um... But yeah, Frank was really, really good at, at size relationships when he would build fantasy characters. But you really, really, this is just, he needs to have feet that can support all this weight. It's close, but I don't know. This just looks like it would weigh so much. And no doubt this character is strong. So this is fascinating too. So he's got armor on this side but not on this side, and he's got almost like a, um, well, his, his skin almost looks like burnt, like animal hide. And he's got armor protecting there. Nothing really on his side flanks. And then the animal fur. And this. He is wearing boots. It's kind of interesting. 
He's got fancy boots. So at some point during the day, he gets dressed and puts on boots, just like you and I. This is cool. They're really into this, like, one side armor thing. I like this. The shoulder wrappings are very, very cool. The gloves are great. This is cool. It's a little nondescript. And they've got that, I guess, is that asymmet asymmetry when it's not the same? I can't remember doesn't matter I know it exists <laughs> I don't need to know the term uh, so she's got a blue gem in her sword I don't know what that signif signifies this is different doesn't seem to have a gem this could have been acquired from maybe like another battle or something like that oh man look at this guy is this cool to say on this one but we will look <clears throat> oh man look at this guy he's having a bad day his armor is cool so he's barefoot and he's got at least the remains of some original armor he must be very very strong because that is a huge weapon that he's holding he's his armor isn't the same if you notice he's got like a little bit of like a leg bracer here but here he's got more like a wrapping armor here yeah, he's just like like an undead soldier that's kind of looks like he's gone to the dark side once he was dead, but maybe at one point was like a good soldier. Oh man, this guy's jacked up. He's undead though. This guy is toast. He's not just injured because he's already zo got zombie stuff going on. Nice painting on this. That's really good. This is cool. Uh, it could be like a photo stat, um, like photo, like of actual real sort of burns. Kind of looks that way. They he like grafted it on. <clears throat> this is cool. What has he got on his back? What is that? Looks like he at one point had supplies. Like maybe they had supply wolves, and then these guys got torched too. I don't think that those were put on after the fact. This was something he was carrying before he was put into this state. That's cool. Obi Wan Kenobi is going to come destroy the Death Star. So here's a dragon. It's nice. Wow. Is that how he normally is? That's crazy. I don't know the story behind that, but that's really, really trippy. Is this a statue? What is it? It looks like a dragon. I, I mean, that clearly is part of his makeup. I wonder if it, can he use that as a weapon? Oh, maybe they're both they're both like that one's dead, and then this one's about to be dead. Oh, she's cool. This looks like a Menton 3 drawing. Yeah, this is neat. This is really cool. It'd be hard to do that in pencil. <laughs> like pencil and ink. And there's our weapon. It's nice. Very dramatic lighting. These guys are cool. I guess it's big teeth. That's interesting. That would hurt if he swats you with that. Clayton Crane could do an awesome version of these. <laughs> that Carnage book was great, man. He's so good. This is cool. You know, they're just trying hybrids of things. <clears throat> so this is like a crocodile with like almost like a ant eater sort of head on it and platypus tail and then all these um uh, i think monks and sort of religious people would stick all these statues in like um caves it's a pretty crazy looking little animal this is cool so this is clearly like some sort of aberration and again there's that ice the ice is coming off of him so these guys must all be undead <coughs> Oh man, look at her. 
What's this interesting? What is that on her arm? Oh, it's like some sort of, uh, almost like a Wolverine thing. Like, is it, you know, like Wolverine, when he didn't have the claws, he would strap them to him. And these are bells. She must have been at one point, like, fancy and then destroyed. This is really wild. This is cool with the big hoop. Oh man, look at this. Yeah, this is a very ornate culture or something that all this stuff is from. It's got a bit of a different vibe. Crown of the Sunken King. This is cool. I'd love to open up a comic book and see a page like this. You know the venture is waiting. <laughs> but again, you know, it's like you want to go up here and cruise in here and see who's in here and if you can make it over here and what's up here and what's going on over here. It's fun stuff. Look, there's even a path and it leads you around the waterfalls. It's like a black drawing, but painted. <laughs> This is all cool. He's got the drape over. Man, his belt is great. Look at that. That is some cool gear. This is all nice, very functional. You see the thumb has its own joint. This has got a gap so that his wrist can have what? A range of motion. This thing has got to be able to pivot and do all the things that it does. Strapped on here. There's gaps here so that he's got some motion, range of motion up here. This is a separate piece, protects the shoulder, but the arm can move independently. Some nice padded male armor, the knees, mobility, and then the shoes. Shoes are a big one. You want to make sure that you do good shoes and boots, you know, so do your uh, homework on that. She's fancy. It's kind of cool. So is she blind in one eye? Man, that's really cool. And she's got fancy shoes. We were just talking about that. Look at her shoes. This is interesting. So possibly she's blind in one eye. Or she, I almost get the impression that she's blind in both eyes, but that's maybe more of an aesthetic, but who knows. She probably sees through her magic. Wow. This is cool. Man, she's super creepy. They're doing the backwards foot thing that I talk about. This foot looks like it's this foot. That's weird. I don't know why artists do that. There's an arch right here, and this pulls more forward. Watch. I can I can even fix it a little for him. There. <laughs> there. I would bend it a little bit more, honestly, but it's close enough. But yeah, I don't know why artists do that. They draw backwards feet. It's like this, the side of your foot goes like this. This side has a curve. It's not the other way around. This is cool. Okay, I think you guys get the point. I'm going to wrap this video up because this thing is going to be incredibly long. But uh, yeah, have fun with all the things that you create for your books. That's the key. Use your imagination. Use reference. Combine reference and ideas that you like make it your own draw it a lot so that you get real comfortable with it and you can just knock out your female character that wears the crazy long shoes and has the drapey stuff and uh you know the the evil old lady who's in the wheelchair or man um you know really get into it and have fun with it it's your world you're creating so all right i'll talk to you guys all later have a good one and uh smash that like button all right bye